The casting stroke can be thought of as the total distance that the rod tip moves through during each stroke, while the casting arc can be thought of as the angle the rod or the rod butt moves through during each stroke. The total stroke incorporates this total piston-like movement. Now that backwards and forwards motion we call translation. And this rotation at either end with the wrist we call rotation. It's those two things that combined that make up our casting stroke. A friend of mine likes to think of this as a piece of pie. And the key to performing really nice loops is to get that rod tip moving in as straight a line as possible. Now, in order to do that, what you've got to do is employ a casting arc that accommodates the bend that you've got in the rod. Or put another way, the longer line that you have out, the longer your casting arc is going to have to be. Now, it's a vital concept to get your head around, and it's called the variable casting arc. A short cast of 15 feet is going to be performed with a short casting stroke, while a longer cast of, say, 45 feet or so is going to have a longer casting stroke. Now again, there's a simple rule that ties this all together, and that is long line, long stroke, short line, short stroke. Now, tailing loops result from too narrow a casting arc, and big wide open loops result from too wide a casting arc. So now we can put two of our essentials together. So we've previously talked about pause and timing. So our tip now is short line, short stroke, short pause, long line, long stroke, long pause. Let's see what that looks like. 